most parents can relate. Raise my hand right here. You're at a fair, you're at a carnival, your kids, they're begging to get on a ride. And sometimes you want to get on that ride as well, right? Sometimes. The only thing, though, on your mind is their safety, and that is for good reason. There are well documented accidents like these. 30,000 people ended up in emergency rooms across the country, and that was last year alone. And tonight, the I team's Ginger Allen is here learning that there's very little oversight in these rides. And in Texas, regulators you found out are actually asking for help. You're about to see that. That's right. You know, bottom line, you need to trust the park, the fair, or the carnival because here in the state of Texas, the I team has learned the very agency in charge of protecting you and your children has been saying for years we cannot monitor all these rides. Now, I need to warn you, some of what you are about to see may be disturbing. <laughs> By many estimates, the chance of this happening to you or your children is one in millions. But obviously, mechanics fail. In 2013, 52-year-old Rosa Esparza died falling off the Texas giant at Six Flags. In 2015, Noor Gonzalez says she violently hit the ground when the scrambler broke at Trader's Village in Grand Prairie. Last summer, 10 year old Caleb Schwab died on this water slide in Kansas. And just in the last few months, a 15 month old died shocked by a fence near a bounce house at this Kansas carnival. Rides have stuck in California, Maryland, and Texas. And most recently, an image that sticks in the minds of many. The fireball at the State Fair of Ohio fell apart in mid air, killing an 18 year old, injuring many. His mother asked, who's making sure these rides are safe? There's no universal application of safety to protect all of us. She's beyond outraged. Safety analyst Ken Martin says the fireball is just one example. Someone should have seen the corrosion that caused it to fail. We don't track the things that we should have been tracking that would have allowed us to prevent that particular type of accident. The I-Team has learned there is no database tracking ride safety and no federal requirement for inspections. A different department in each state decides how to regulate and inspect. In many, it's the Department of Labor, Agriculture, Revenue, the Fire Marshal. In Texas, it's the Department of Insurance. It's basically a paperwork process. In Texas, if operators can provide paperwork showing a ride, slide, or bounce house has been inspected in the last year and has a $1 million insurance policy, it can operate. Exactly what type of qualification is that? And apparently, the Department of Insurance agrees it's not good enough. Since 2012, the I-Team has learned the state agency has repeatedly told legislators it has no efficient means of monitoring rides and no effective means for recourse when instances occur. It says it has no way to track problems except through competitors and online searches. If there's ongoing problems or injuries, what happens? We have no authority to cite or, or sanction anyone for, for having an injury. Just last September, TDI asked lawmakers once again to transfer the responsibility to another regulatory agency, stating the number of rides in our state is steadily increasing. Do you think the state could be doing more, or is it needed? Right now, it's a, it depends on the facility to make sure that they're safe. It's Rusty Fitzgerald's job to do just that, keep millions of Texas fairgoers safe. I don't think the state of Texas is capable of having enough inspectors to go out who actually know the job. Fitzgerald says he goes above and beyond state and federal standards to ensure safety. I want to be able to sleep at night. He says he handpicks what rides come to the fair and then sends his own inspectors to other states to view the equipment before it ever arrives. If you're not perfect, you don't come. <laughs> Fitzgerald knows recent incidents such as the Ohio tragedy could haunt fairgoers this year. That ride was 17 years old. It's played around a lot of salt water. Uh, it's very corrosive. Uh, the rides that I, I kind of keep track of where they go. Fitzgerald says he will have a team inspecting rides here daily, a more stringent process than most carnivals nationwide. But still, some insiders say those inspections need to be more regulated by state or federal authorities who are comparing notes. The amusement parks and carnivals have an inspection process. It's their inspection process. It is nothing more than a case of a fox guarding the hen house. 
So now that I've told you how little information is out there, let me tell you what you can check for. One, look for one of these stickers on all rides, slides, and bounce houses. We showed it to you in our story. Also, in the last three years, TDI has found 735 attractions out of compliance, and ride operators have self-reported 300 injuries. Now, notice I did just say self-reported. There is no requirement to report. I have put all of that information, all of those details on our website under our investigative section, cbsdfw.com. But guys, bottom line, I set it off the top. You have to trust the park you're going to. Can I rewind super fast sure. to the, toward the beginning of the piece in there? You had said in the state of Texas, which is what mm -hmm. we're concerned about, that they have to provide insurance and they mm -hmm. have to provide proof of an inspection within the last 12 months. Right. Who does the inspection? Chosen by the ride operator or the company as well as its insurance company. So they get to decide together. Pick from a list. I, you, we're in this business long enough that yes. you don't think a lot of things surprise you anymore. This, mm -hmm. this is a bit of a jaw dropper on Give this. Give the chills. The elevator in our building is required to have more inspections. Yeah. Wow. Ginger Allen, mm -hmm. excellent investigative work tonight. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. You